Today I'm going to talk about some of the work that we've been doing about using STAN to do spatial smoothing of regression parameters. So in this case, we're, as our example is, we're estimating a, a different linear trend for every county, and then we're using Bayesian smoothing to smooth the regression parameters across space. And I've got a, a pretty long list of co-authors here, and so um, some of them have perhaps done more of the work on this than I have, but I'm the one that's doing the talk. So who am I? Well, um, I'm a professor of agricultural economics. Now, I, I do have a, a master's degree in statistics, and I'm at Oklahoma State University. I consider myself an applied econometrician, and so I'm interested in, in solving actual problems, applied problems. Now, I, I teach classical econometrics, which you might consider the frequentist methods. I do not consider myself a Bayesian. I use uh, Bayesian methods um, only because I need to. Uh, I've used STAN about a year and a half, um, off and on, maybe not even that much. Um, but there was a month this summer where I, I did use it every day. So why do I use Bayesian methods? Well, in, in some cases, not, not the one I'm talking about today, but in some cases it's because that I have prior information. And so there, there's really a, a definite need to use Bayesian methods. Um, or other cases, I need to impose some sort of restrictions that classical methods make difficult. But th what I'm talking about today is that, you know, that the standard um, classical frequentist methods just don't work. That th they end up um, con either not really converging at all, or they have uh, local optimums and you just really can't have confidence in the results that you get from them. Uh, I know I'm supposed to also care about the, the theoretical advantages of, of Bayesian methods, but as, as, a, as a classical econometrician, um, I really don't care about that. So um, my use of STAN, so um, in this, only the last one is the one I'm talking about today, that I've used it to do seemingly unrelated regression and imposing symmetry and homogeneity on, on a system. Um, and I know that there is, is, a, is an example in the STAND manual, but the example in the STAND manual has the same um, regressors in every equation. And so even though it's fairly helpful, it, it is, is not sufficient to solve the problem that I need to solve. Also used it to do nonlinear regression in such as a stochastic plateau and so that you know the nonlinear regression sometimes has problems with local optimums and so that the Bayesian has an advantage. And then for there's probably a whole lot of work that I've done regarding various types of spatial smoothing. And so that's some of what I'm going to talk about today. And so you're talking about smoothing parameters across space. So since this is a STAN conference, what do I like about STAN? Well, uh, I really switched to STAN from MCMC because of speed. And the problem I'm talking about today, um, w we couldn't do with with Markov chain Monte Carlo. Um, we just couldn't run it long enough to ever get convergence. Um, and so the it's, it's it's multiples of time faster. I mean, it's not infinitely faster, but certainly four times faster, twenty times faster, something like that. I like the flexibility of Stan. That I certainly haven't run into any problem that, that I couldn't write in STAN. And I also like the output that it gives me. The, the convergence tests are, 
are there readily available um, and so, so there, there's a lot of things I like about it what I dislike about Stan well um, it's one thing is the cryptic documentation so if you look at some of the message boards or the manual um, it, it's written sometimes almost like you, you've got to be an insider to, to grasp it and so I found the, the learning curve fairly high you know I'm used to using SAS where I have four examples and so with, with Stan it's usually more like half an example that I get and what I dislike about it is also speed even though it's way faster than uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo it's still a little bit slow for some of the problems that I need to solve like I talk about the problem I'm talking about today I mean, the way we're doing it you know it takes 31 days and that that's, that's um, pretty slow to make it really practical so the applied problem that I'm talking about is we're dealing with crop insurance specifically for corn and it's this area yield insurance and so we we want to know the premiums to, to charge in order to that to do that you've got to get the, the distribution of the yields and as a important important part of that really the most important part of that is the expected yield and the problem is that, that corn yields have gone up over time and so we have this time trend and so we, we've got to expect that the next year's yield going to be higher than this year's yield but the yields go up more in some places than others and so we really don't want to have the same time trend in every place and so what we're doing is we're estimating a linear time trend for every county and every county has a different linear time trend but we want we don't really have enough data to estimate separate models for every county and so we want to use the data around each county to do some smoothing to so that we get more precise estimates. So the, the contribution is you know, we're using Bayesian Krieging or smoothing, spatial smoothing to estimate a linear regression and it's also done with heteroscedasticity and so there, there are some other models out there but uh, I don't know of other models that use a, a different smoother for every parameter in the regression or ones that also smooth the, heteros the, the variance parameters and just a, as a reminder then remember that we're, we're doing regression and the regression parameters differ by county so ultimately what we're doing is Krieging and which is comes from the geography literature so it's a method of an interpolation originating from geostatistics the original person that did this was in South Africa and did it for gold and his name was was Krieg K-R-I-G-E so the technique is named after him but ultimately we're interested in doing smoothing now this map is just the smoothing of a mean now we're going to smooth the intercept we're going to smooth the slope and we're going to s smooth terms in, in the variance equation as well so there's quite a few alternative spatial models out there when most people think of spatial models they think of the spatial error model of, of Anselm and what we're doing is really not that much like that because the spatial error model would have the same time trend coefficient in every county there is a pretty long time of, of spatial temporal models which is very much like we're doing but they only smooth the intercept. Uh, geographically weighted regression is very much like what we're doing, but geographically weighted regression just assumes how to weight the adjacent K. 
counties and we're estimating the weights and so that uh, that's a potential advantage of what we're doing so mathematically to look at what we're doing is we're interested in county yield densities and we uh, the, the yield each county county I in year T and each each of them has a different mean and a different variance now the variances are, over time are d deterministic and but we do have these I subscripts on the alpha and the beta and so that the, the intercept and the time trend differ by county. And we also have heteroscedasticity so that the variance also can change over time and then for some reason we also added stochastic volatility which is really not necessary to have done. And again we assume that all our parameters are varying by location. So what we're doing is a Bayesian hierarchical model and so in the, in the first layer is just straightforward normality so conditional on the exponential spatial process means you just have a normal distribution and the, uh, the hierarchical the, the middle layer is the exponential spatial process that describes the correlation among the parameters and what's unusual about what we've done is we have a a different uh, exponential spatial process for every parameter so that we can have um, more correlation for the intercept than we do for the slope and then the final layer is the priors and since this is a stand conference I've gone ahead and put up some stand code now this is not the actual STAN code because it's a little complicated and so this is a, a simplified model where they're s smoothing only over the mean and so at, at the bottom you know these would be yield vectors yield for um, these vector of county yield and they have a, a local mean and then we have our spatial correlation function up here and then our parameters the, the B in this case is where the spatial correlation occurs and so this is sort of like a spatial random effect and you know I, I put the code up on purpose because one of the reasons I, I chose to present this is I'd like some comments on uh, why my program is so slow and some ways that I could speed it up. Now, when I, when I prepared this, I got to thinking about this, and that you know I've read the Stan manual, and it tells me that when I use a, a multivariate model like this, that I ought to use um, vectors of vectors, and I ought to use the the multi Koleski other than the multi normal. And I think about, well, I did that when I did similar regression, regression, but I haven't done it here. So that's one thing that I haven't done that, that I probably should try. But I, I'm interested in, in comments that, that people might have. So the computational issues is that, you know, it takes 31 days to run. And that's quite a long time. But, you know, we're, we're doing some out-of-sample forecasting and um, there multiple states and and so there, there's a lot more to it than just simply running at one time just one running at one time actually takes a few hours so just to look at some of the results give you some examples of them so if you look at the trend in the mean and so these are our states so this is Iowa and Illinois and so these are the slope coefficients, the trend coefficients, coefficients on the on the time trend, and so what we find is that corn yields have gone up more in the northern areas. Um, 
than they have in the southern. Why? Well, one of the reasons is simply they were higher to begin with. But um, another reason is that the reason yields are going up is they're learning to plant earlier. And they're developing varieties to plant earlier and that, they're, and that this is making more difference in the northern areas. And if we look at, in terms of the variance, we see that the, the trend is actually the opposite. That the variance has been going up more in the southern areas. And if you're pricing crop insurance, this is something that matters. And so just to give you an example that, you know, this is a case where we could estimate um, an ordinarily squares model for each county. And we would get things that aren't, you know, wildly different. But we see that with the, the Beijing Krieging, that it's smoother. And we've done some out of sample forecasting, and it's also clearly more accurate, too. It's not just that it looks better. Okay, so finally, to, to set up the conclusions. To say, say again, what what it really is it that motivated the work is that we're, we're trying to establish crop insurance premiums, and for crop insurance premiums, we need the, the whole distribution, and the, these distributions have not been stable over time. They have these time trends, um, but we really don't have a lot of data. We don't have enough time series data to have confidence in estimating a different model for every county. And so we're using Bayesian Krieging, Bayesian Spatial Smoothing to smooth the parameters uh, across space. And so this gives us a different time trend for each county. So we're estimating a lot of parameters. That's one of the reasons that it's slow. Um, we are doing spatial smoothing of regression parameters. So this is unlike the spatial error model that many other people use. In the spatial error model that they have a correlation of error terms. And we're doing correlation of the parameters. And what, what we find here is that there's really a, still a, a need to speed up the program that um, it, it's still a little slow to really be able to do some of the things that I want to do. It needs to be speeded up. And that's one of the reasons that I um, volunteered to give the talk, other than just to help to fill the program, because I'm, I'm interested in some comments about um, ways that, that I can make this thing run faster.